I was homeless in a major populated area for a very long time earlier in my life. I don't really want to go into too much detail about the area I was in though. But although I wasn't in the heart of the city, I was definitely in an area that was known for having a high rate of homelessness involved with it. As to why I got there, it's not really important to the story. Just know that it was a downward spiral that eventually ended. I definitely am not homeless anymore. There were a bunch of good places to squat. However, even though I was generally really exhausted, it was sometimes really difficult to sleep in any of them. The drug use was, and I'm sure still is, pretty prevalent in the homeless community. Sometimes, no matter how absolutely tired I was, it was not easy to be sleeping in a house full of heavy drug users. There were noises, screams, people having really loud sex, you name it. Hell, even remembering it right now makes me realize how lucky I am that I've worked my way out of it. I could always find food, but I did always have problems getting to sleep, and the trains were not a good solution to my problem. I recall a time where I was so desperate for nothing more than just a really long and good night's sleep that I actually decided to break into an old abandoned hospital just in order to find some rest. That probably doesn't make much sense right off the bat. If there was an abandoned hospital in the area, why weren't there tons of homeless people squatting there already? Well, it's because there was supposedly a serial killer who squatted there. He didn't have a real name, and many of us homeless didn't even know if he really existed. I was obviously one of those few who did not believe that he did. Well, although I didn't believe, I did believe enough for a while that it took me quite a long time to finally gather up the nerve to break into that building. I mean, why tempt fate if you don't have to, right? But one night when my usual squatting house was particularly loud and annoying, I just found that I was going to lose my mind if I couldn't get a good night's sleep. I wasn't willing to use alcohol or drugs in order to get myself into that position, so I decided it would be a good time to break into that hospital. When I got there, it was like night and day compared to the rest of the places I had squatted in. It was nice and quiet, and I knew that I could find myself a really nice place to lay down and finally get that rest. I mean, all I had to do was contend with a story that was obviously an urban legend. Hell, perhaps I had found myself a new place to get some sleep every day. I found a room that actually had a bed still in it. I curled up on it. Sure, it was mildewed and such, but I had been homeless long enough that a mattress was still heaven in that condition, and I fell right asleep. I don't know how long I had been asleep for when I woke up. All I know was that I slept deeply and I slept well. For the first time in quite a long time, I felt refreshed. When I was getting up off the bed, something that had been sitting on my chest fell to the floor. Picking it up, I realized it was a Polaroid photograph. Looking at it, my heart skipped a few beats. It was a photograph of me sleeping, with holes through the eyes in the Polaroid. I wasn't sure how long I looked at it. Someone had been in the room with me while I was sleeping, and had snapped a photo of me, and the holes in the eyes were an obvious threat that told me I had to leave and not ever come back. It was almost like a warning. I mean, of course, I took it that way, because whoever had taken the photograph could easily have killed me in my sleep, but for whatever reason, they chose not to. I left and never came back after that. I guess over the years, I began to rationalize what happened just a little bit better. I highly doubt there was a killer in that hospital. Probably just another homeless guy who wanted the place all to himself. He likely had no intention of killing me, just scaring me into not coming back. If that is what happened, it definitely worked. My best friend Carl and I used to be into exploring abandoned buildings, and during one of our explorations, I experienced the most chilling thing I've ever seen in my life. The area we live in has quite a lot of abandoned buildings. Most of them are old factories that have been empty and decaying all my life. 
We had broken into several of them and were looking for something new to do. There were only so many old broken down assembly lines and corroded tools you could see before it started to get boring and quite frankly extremely monotonous and for the most part it was not ever creepy or scary. Halloween was coming around that year and we really wanted to do something scary. That was when Carl came to me and told me he had found the perfect option for us. His aunt had worked as a nurse in a psychiatric hospital when she was very young. It had been closed down for several decades. The only reason that Carl and I had never heard about it was that it was nearly impossible to get to. You would have to travel through a very heavily forested area just to arrive at it. There were roads, but they had long since been grown over. I guess that when the hospital had first opened, it was also used to treat communicable diseases, so that's why it wasn't built within the town. A lot of old hospitals like that were built in areas far away from their townships. Well, of course there was no way I was passing this opportunity up, so Carl and I packed up a few things about a week and a half before Halloween, and we set out on a trek into the forest. His aunt had given him rough directions as to where the place was, and part of me wondered if she was just playing an elaborate prank on us, and when we arrived there wouldn't really be a hospital out there. It was quite the long trek before we finally found evidence of a road that had been grown over. However, we were both excited when we did. We followed this old road until we arrived at the hospital. We were quite shocked. The place was huge. We were surprised that such a large building had been sitting there in the middle of that forest, forgotten for who knows how long. Since there were no roads that were not overgrown, there was no caretaker there either. Parts of the lawn had grown extremely large, and other parts were simply dead. It was fairly easy for us to find our way inside. It was also easy to find a way to get in, as it wasn't boarded up in any way. We found a broken window and slipped right in. Now, although we were looking for a creepy time, we weren't completely stupid, just moderately so. Our little adventure was taking place right during the day, not during the evening. Even so, it was dark enough that we needed flashlights in order to look around. We split up because we actually wanted to explore the entire place before it got dark. We didn't have cell phones, not that it would have mattered at the time. We were pretty much in the middle of nowhere, and I figured that even if we had had them, we wouldn't have had a signal. We did, however, have a set of walkie-talkies to communicate with one another. That way, in case someone found something really interesting, he would be able to contact the other right away. We split up, and for a while, it was pretty interesting, if not eventful. There was all sorts of old equipment, wheelchairs, and a ton of things I can't even explain what they were. Some of it was pretty creepy, but nothing that I really wanted to tell Carl to run across the hospital just to check out. But that's when I heard it. A male human scream. A loud scream. The first thing I did was freeze, before I heard it once again. I thought about Carl and got very concerned. However, before I could even pick up my walkie-talkie to contact him, he contacted me, and his question scared the crap out of me. Are you okay? Carl asked in a worried voice. Why are you screaming, man? I was too shocked to answer at first. However, when he asked me again what was wrong, I let him know that I thought it was him that was screaming. I heard the scream once again. It was coming from the direction that Carl had gone off in, but that wasn't extremely telling. However, I guessed whoever was screaming must have been somewhere in between us. We agreed to meet up, and we were able to find each other rather quickly. In that period, I had heard the screaming a few more times. We were concerned, but both agreed that we would try to find the source of these cries. It was surprising that someone else could be in the hospital, but as far as we knew, some serial killer had trapped someone in the basement or something. We weren't huge guys by any stretch of the mind, but Carl had brought a gun with him just in case we would need some sort of protection. These screams were not constant and it was really hard to get a bead on where it was coming from. The only thing we both knew for sure was that it was coming from the basement floor. We needed a flashlight when we went to explore that part of the hospital. It was completely underground, and there were no lights still working. 
None of the rooms in the bottom floor had locked doors on them either, so we were able to explore them with our flashlight absolutely. However, when we were down there, we didn't hear the screaming at all. It wasn't until we went through dozens of darkened rooms and found absolutely nothing that could account for a scream that we ascended the stairs back to the ground floor. By the time we had made it back up, it had been quite a while since we'd last heard it. In fact, we didn't hear it again while we were there in the hospital at all. We really searched the entire place. We remained there even till after dark, convinced that it was more important to try and help someone than it was to worry about walking home at night. But we searched to no avail, and eventually had to leave the hospital. We made our way home through the dark in the woods. The entire time, we were extremely scared by our recent experience. We were nervous and felt we were being watched the entire time. Also, we were still concerned about whoever we had heard screaming. We couldn't do much, though, other than file an anonymous report with the police. The more we talked about it, the more it seemed odd that someone would have been there when we were, and needing help as well. We began to wonder if perhaps the screaming was simply something trying to scare us out of the building. Who knows? I guess we never will. The scariest experience I've ever had occurred when I was trying to start up an exploration-themed channel on YouTube. It was actually such an awful experience that when it happened a few years back, I gave up entirely on the idea. Anyway, this is what happened. I wanted to start out with something pretty big, so I looked around. Eventually, I came up with what I figured was a good idea for a first video. It was an old mall nearby that had been shut down for quite a long time. There was always talk in the town about why it hadn't been demolished because it was such an eyesore, but no one really knew why it hadn't been. I guess I sort of figured I could maybe cultivate some sort of Dawn of the Dead look for it or something that would give it a really extra creepy vibe. I had to make sure, however, that I could get into it without being seen. It was such a large building and in such a conspicuous location that I had to go there at night to find a way to sneak in. I actually wanted to scout it out before I actually filmed a video about it. And yeah, that might be considered cheating, but I hardly care to admit that. As I mentioned before, I decided in the end not to do it. At first, I actually had to find a way to pry the door open. It wasn't really until I decided to break into the mall that I realized that Malls don't really have windows to slip in. I couldn't believe that I had never noticed that before. Fortunately, though, I had anticipated having to pry something open, so I took a crowbar from my dad's tool shed. It was quite the task to get it open, but in the end, I did manage it. The inside of the mall was extremely bare, actually. I had anticipated a lot of trash lying around, lots of debris, something like that, but I didn't get that. It was surprisingly not that messy. There were some cobwebs and stuff like that, but not all the graffiti and trash one would expect when they go into a building that's been abandoned by time. I was beginning to think that I wouldn't find anything interesting at all, as I was going from store to store and not finding anything of note. That is, until I wandered into what used to be a record store. Although there was nothing really in the record store itself, the back door to the office was broken, and I was able to enter it. Most of the other backroom doors have those combination locks on them, where you have to hit a few buttons to get in. So at least this one had a broken lock. When I went in, though, I sort of wished I hadn't. And that's when I realized that the place hadn't been totally abandoned. There was still a business being run for the mall, 15 years after it had closed. A drug business. There were tons of bags of white powder, and I couldn't quite guess what it was. Could have been cocaine, heroin, meth. I don't really know. I wasn't really happy that I had stumbled upon this either. If there were this much drugs in the back room of that record store, that meant there were people dealing it, and I would absolutely not want to run into them. I left the back room and decided to get the hell out of the mall. However, when I was in the record store, I could hear faint voices talking to one another. I was terrified and assumed these were the drug dealers and they were probably coming back. 
The only thing I could think to do was to run and hide behind the cashier's counter, so I did. I crouched down and listened. I couldn't see anything, but I could hear the voices. It sounded like there were three different men, and they actually sounded pretty young, too. I heard them come into the record store, walk past the counter, and finally into the back room. I was shaking the whole time, and terrified of making a noise and being discovered. I got up the nerve afterward to get up and look around. When I saw no one was capable of seeing me, I snuck out of the record store and carefully made it to the back door that I had broken into. I then got as far away from that place as quickly as I could. If anyone is wondering, no, I didn't call the police about what was going on. I don't know. I just figured I had broken into a building and thus broken the law myself. I didn't want to get into real trouble. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here, as always. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far into the end of the video. Uh, thank you guys for sending in your stories and all your comments and support. Uh, it's really made me feel a lot better after all that stuff. I admit that maybe I panicked a little bit more than I should have because I had two strikes, but I think with the videos taken down and everything, uh, that I'll eventually put back up after the strikes are gone. Uh, it'll probably be fine, but uh, I still have my second channel there in the comments uh, in case something does happen. I'm also gonna this week try to start posting uh, videos on there as well. I want to read some stuff that's not as scary type of stuff on there, probably some web novels, and maybe do like some readovers of like manga and stuff if anybody's interested in that kind of thing. Please be sure to like, share, or subscribe if you enjoyed the video and feel so inclined. If you do subscribe, make sure to hit that bell and click the all so you can be notified of all my new upcoming videos. Uh, please be sure to leave any feedback in the comments below if you have anything you'd like to let me know, any ways I can improve or anything. Links to all of my social media will be in the description of the video below. You can send me a message on any of those and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. But be warned that I don't use Facebook as often as I use Twitter or Gmail. Uh, if you decide to send in a story to help me out, please be sure to include what the name of the story is, if it has one, how you would like to be credited in the description of the video the story appears in, and the theme of the story, if it has any. Please be sure that it's easy to read and has relatively appropriate grammar, but other than that, pretty much I'll accept anything. Huge thanks to my artist friend Alan who is doing all my art for this channel and the other channel. So be sure to check him out. I think he does commissions and he does a lot of cool horror stuff so you might be able to get some good things out of him. If you're curious about the music used in this video, it's in the description in the order it appears as always with links to the artist. And I think that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day.